Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to this Lunar Nebula reading review of the Kindle app. I'm Jalanon. This is a little bit of an overview of what I like about the Kindle app, what I dislike about the Kindle app, and hopefully it'll let you know whether it is a good option for you for reading. I use the Kindle app rather than a Kindle because I do have an iPad, and I find that I use that a lot more. I do think the e-ink reading experience uh, a normal Kindle is very nice, especially for your eyes. Um, I don't know if the Paperwhite still uses the e-ink, but I've also noticed it's pretty easy to just turn down the brightness, and then when you enter a book you're reading, let's try this one, you can switch the font by tapping on the page and then clicking that AA, you can switch its size, you can switch its brightness, etc, etc. You can also change the background color. But I've noticed with the white font, it's a lot easier to read at night. And I don't think you saw the brightness really change too much in the recording. But uh, yeah, it does make a difference when you're reading, especially at night. And of course you can also cause your iPad to blue shift at night. If you are a little bit you know, having trouble with seeing the text, it is pretty easy to change it. You can change that brightness, you can change the size, and it'll keep track of everything for you. I like it right around here. And it'll keep track of all this. It's pretty easy to slide back and forth, so that makes it a little bit easier. If you're having hand issues as well, then that should help you. You don't have to hold a book, you can get a little stand for an iPad. You could read on the computer as well, because the Kindle app can just be downloaded to your desktop. And there are a lot of free books available, thanks to the Gutenberg project and all of that, but you can also find some on Amazon. They just hide behind some of the publishers, like, let's check out Jules Verne, a very classic sci-fi author. So, you can find quite a few things, but normally, Let's see, yeah, download sample, eh? It can be a little bit of an effort to find one that isn't controlled by a publisher that will cost money. And for some reason, it is not showing them at the, the beginning. Usually, you'll find one that has pretty much no cover image, and that's one of the best ways to figure out if it will cost you money or not. Let's see. What about you? You have a cover image. Nope. Yeah, and right now, one of my cons with the Kindle app is it still doesn't support purchasing. I thought it changed that after its last update, but no. You have to go to Amazon.com, specifically through a browser, to find that. Tisk tisk. So, that's one con. The other big con is that the syncing from one device to another has not really worked for me. It might work for other people. Maybe my devices are just too old or something. But yeah, let's go to our library. So for this instance, I've been reading on several devices. Let's go to this one. So it'll say most recent page read. You're currently on page 15. The most recent page read is 43. So we'll go to that. And as you can see, it did move me over to 43. So, great. That should be where I am, right? Well, sometimes it doesn't know what your furthest page read was, or if you've read further on one device and then are trying to start again on a device that has your history. So let's say I read to page 60 on this device, right? And then I go back to my iPhone or whatever, and then read to page 120. Then I come back to here, it'll probably get screwed up. And just say, oh yeah, your furthest page is page 60, because that's where you last were on this device, basically. So that can be a little messy. My workaround for that is just, you know, make a few bookmarks. So right here, I'm gonna tap on there, at the top right corner you can see kind of that weird ribbon looking logo 
So let's say I have a bookmarked page. You'll see that little ribbon in the top right that is blue. To get rid of, you can just click that bookmark in the top right, that little ribbon icon, but we'll do that again. It looks like you can only have three bookmarks, which is news to me, uh, but the way to navigate between them is you can see at the bottom of the screen that little timeline and these little dots on it. So you can click on those dots and that'll take you to your bookmarks. Now, I don't know if there's some issue going on right now where you can't have more than three, or maybe my iPad just doesn't like that or something, who knows. But so far, right now, it looks like I can only have three. Another way to navigate, though, is if you just read one chapter at a time or something. Uh, you can go up here to the top left with these three horizontal lines. You can go to, say, the cover of the book. You can go to the beginning. You can go to a certain page. You can type that in. Or you can scroll down and you can see the chapters listed out. So let's go to chapter 5. There we go. So here we are. Let's put a new bookmark in there. And yeah, I got rid of my furthest bookmark. So it looks like three bookmarks is the maximum right now. With highlighting, so if you're doing, say, a big old textbook on the Kindle, if you like taking notes or highlighting things, you can tap and hold and leave a highlight. And you can switch that highlight around by tapping on the highlight. It'll select all that highlight. You can change its color. You can take a note, you can copy it, and then paste that into another app. If there's a quote you really like, things like that, you can share it with people. And then, once again, we'll tap on the screen itself, away from the text, and that'll pull it out so you can have all these options available. At the top right, you can also see a notebook. It does uh, sync with Goodreads, which is a website which will let you kind of keep track of what you're reading, let you communicate with other readers, what you like, what you don't like, etc. There's an x-ray function, which will show you different things about the book, tell you about the people on the current page, different terms, etc, etc. So that can be kind of fun if you don't know what some terms are, but of course, you can also find a good word. Let's go with kernel. So if we tap and hold on kernel, I've currently downloaded a dictionary, so it'll show me kernel. And we can go to the dictionary for further information on that kernel. And here's the dictionary. And to get back to your book, you'll tap on the page and click that top left arrow that goes back. Now that we're in the book, we can close by clicking the top left arrow. Ta-da, we're back. And if we want to go back into our book, you just click on that book icon in the middle of the bottom page. And here we are. So let's do a couple of these as highlights. And then it should show me a list of all the stuff I've highlighted. So in the notebook, you can see the highlight. And if you have a little bit of trouble uh, selecting the sentences you want, then you'll see that it'll only do the stuff you've highlighted. Yep. It'll also show you bookmarks. But it starts with your bookmarks and your highlights. Hmm. I think I like this presentation less than their previous one, because it used to just show... Aha! So you can just see your highlights and your notes and everything by using that filter on the top left. So that's good to know. Hopefully students will be able to take advantage of that. And, you know, it's built right into the app. Now, the little check marks in your library indicate what things you've actually downloaded. So right now I don't have Street Cultivation 2 from Kindle Unlimited downloaded. So if I click it, it'll start downloading. Books are quite fast to download since they are mostly just text, not even really an image file. There's like one image, the cover, and that's it. So it doesn't take too much time to download, which is really nice and so on and so forth. Now, Kindle Unlimited, uh, once you've finished a book, just as an example, let's uh, choose Harry Potter, y la piedra filosofal. We'll go to that for this page. And as you saw, it pushed me back a page because it remembered that, like on my iPhone, I was here. Let's say we just scroll all the way to the end of the book, right? 
with Kindle Unlimited, basically, you can go here, it'll show you more by JK Rowling, show you all this stuff. Now you can just exit if you want to go back to the end, and then if you wanted to see that options page again, you just scroll forward, swipe to the right, basically. You can review this on Amazon and Goodreads. Let's go ahead and do five stars, because it is Harry Potter. Uh, you can basically just click cancel. You can do your little Amazon review right here from the app, which is nice, and then you could submit that. Amazon, of course, requires that there's some words in the review. I believe Goodreads will just take it as is with the star amount. But yeah. So, let's see. I think... Let's try this. Prisoner Ask Man was my favorite. You click Learn More. And it should, yeah, since I have Kindle Unlimited, it'll let me download. So let's click Read for Free. And then with Kindle Unlimited, you have 10 titles at a time. So you can return one of these things. And then you could read this one instead. Now, things to note with Kindle Unlimited, if you haven't finished a book and you return it, it will lose track of your place. So, if you care about that, oh, and as you noticed, I had a little dot there, even though I didn't have a bookmark ribbon, just because it remembered that's where I started the session of reading, which is kind of nice. So just to reiterate, with Kindle Unlimited, if you basically download a book by accident, which hopefully you wouldn't, you have to click through a few buttons to do that, uh, it would erase, like say, I return and continued death marked. I'm like halfway through this book. Well, if I returned it, I would have to start from the beginning and try to find where I was in that book since it would lose track of my place. So that's one thing they may want to change in the future, but I don't know how you do that since you technically return it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Another thing is you can see which books you've read, which is kind of nice. Uh, there is a filter. So right now we're seeing all books we've got we're only showing our Kindle Unlimited books. So exit out of that, and you can see the books that aren't marked as Kindle Unlimited as well in all. Now we can click just downloaded books, and that means any books that you haven't truly downloaded uh, will not appear. So we'll only see the books that we've downloaded right here. So yeah, very useful feature, because if you, know, you are reading on an iPhone and you don't want to use data, you want to make sure you're reading something you have downloaded. Which, yeah, that's helpful. You can also sort. You can do it by author, title, etc. Et I barely use that feature. Most of the time, I am only reading three books at a time. Maybe. Hopefully just one. <laughs> now, another kind of useful feature that the Kindle app has is its top left bell lets you see some of the stuff that might be important to you. So let's say you're following an author on Amazon. It'll let you know, oh hey, a new book that this author just made has been released. So if you've been waiting, you can see that, which is really nice. Now you can also get rid of all those. Now, of course, if you don't want to spend any money, the Kindle app is also pretty good at meshing with library apps such as Overdrive and Libby. So with Overdrive, let's add a title. I'm not going to pay too much attention to what we find. I will need a library card for this, and we should be able to put in the, I think, uh, library card information and zip code of your library if they're uh, connected to Overdrive. Uh, apparently Harry Potter is pretty popular still. So there's a lot of books right here. You can, of course, search to see what's available. Uh, let's borrow A Wrinkle in Time. Borrow for 21 days. Oh, that's new. Okay. Uh, let's just say seven days for now. Click Borrow. Read now with Kindle. And it should take us here. So once I put in my password and everything and sign into Amazon on here, it should download it to my Kindle. All right, so I put in my password and everything, and now I can get the library book. 
I'll click that yellow button, but in case you have more of these devices, or let's say some of your devices died and you forgot to delete them, etc., etc., uh, it'll keep updating. You can switch which one it'll deliver to immediately. We'll go to B pad, get that library book. And now we can go to our Kindle and to DA. We'll open it. Let's see, it should show up right here. So I pulled down to make sure it's synced with the wireless connection. It wouldn't show up otherwise, but now we've got it. We can click on it to download it. And now it is downloaded to the device. In seven days, it will wipe itself from being downloaded to our device. I believe it will still show you though. Um, let's see, I think, let's look it up. But basically, yeah, eight days of Luke. Yeah, I'm wrong. So eight days of Luke was a library book I read. It does remember that I did get it once upon a time. And as you can see, it says this book was loaned to you and cannot be downloaded because the loan has ended. So, I like it as a system. It means you don't have to physically go to a library to enjoy the library. And if you have just some budget concerns right now, the Kindle app is still worth downloading. It is free. And you can still get some free options like older books. And most of the time you can check Project Gutenberg online to see what some of those older books that no longer are copyrighted are available. Now, for those of you who don't like physically reading the book, but like listening, I can tell you there's some great integration with Audible and with all of this stuff. So I really like Brandon Sanderson and his Reckoner series. I highly recommend. Uh, one thing you can do is basically listen to the book blah 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 it'll remember where you are in the book after you've listened so let's say we listen to a few pages and if you do decide to read the book you can read from here and then start up the audio again and it'll start from where you've been reading from so it'll start from this page which is really cool so it is a fairly seamless experience between listening to a book that you have bought the audiobook narration to and reading. So I really enjoy that. They did five out of five on that, in my opinion. The syncing, eh, I'm not super impressed with. I would say three out of five if I had to rate it. But basically, overall, the Kindle app, I think, is very worth it. You have a lot of free options. Even the Kindle store has a lot of just free books to download because authors are trying to get their name known. Uh, the Kindle Unlimited function I really like. Uh, I was reading like up to three books a week, so it was worth it for me at the time. Um, now I'm getting a little too into Webtoons, which I will be reviewing shortly, hopefully. Uh, let me know if you enjoy that review. And yeah, honestly, I've really liked the Kindle app. Its cons are few, with like the syncing problem, with the fewer bookmarks. So leave a like if you've enjoyed this Lunar Nebula reading video. Subscribe to see more reviews and book profiles and things like that in the future. Comment below on what you think of the Kindle app. Is there something I've missed that you would like me to cover? Uh, is there maybe some corporate reason you hate it? Etc. Etc. And have a great day, dear viewer.